A teacher is the harbinger of society. A teacher cultivates the seedling into a robust tree which bears the great fruits for the development of not only society but country and all over mankind. Today, let's take a few minutes to really think about all our teachers, whatever they have taught us and thank them for all the good things with which they filled our lives. They absolutely deserve this. Hail to the great building blocks of a learned, civilized, cultured, scientific society of the mankind. We dwell and breathe in it. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD, Pharmacology, and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods, and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better, and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your minds, is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. Let's find some connecting links to further our last discussion. Lo, what it, it turns out into. It turns out into the elaboration of a topic, that is today's topic, enzyme inhibition. Did you ever wonder how many types are actually important or worth considering about the enzyme inhibition. Well, to begin with, we always define. Yes, that's a great ritual. Let's follow it today. When a drug or a chemical denatures the protein moiety, it's generally done by chemicals or drugs like phenol, alkalis, strong acids, heavy metal salts, etc. They non-selectively inhibit the enzymes but that's not the common mechanism, so let's know what is common and what is in vogue. That is the selective inhibition of the enzyme. And that is the way actually the drug is acting. Now this selective enzyme inhibition could be of two types. The first one being competitive enzyme inhibition and the second one being the non-competitive enzyme inhibition. Let's throw the sparkle light on the competitive inhibition of enzymes. You know, it has some very prominent features or characteristics. Let's get to know them one by one. First, the drug's structure in case of competitive enzyme inhibition is same as compared to the substrate. So they are both competing and they are really having a good competition for the catalytic site of the enzyme. They equally compete to reach the enzyme binding site. And what is the consequence? What do you think? Is it fruitful? No way. It leads to the formation of a non-functional product and achievement of a certain what we call new or novel equilibrium. That was all about the first characteristics. Let's come over to our second point. Now, the second prominent thing you should get to know about is to remember and know that competitive inhibition in this particular type, what is the status of the rate constant? That is capital K small m and the V max, that is the velocity. In case of Competitive enzyme inhibition, the Km or the rate constant, it increases while the velocity or the Vm is unchanged. Now, what do you infer out of this altered and unaltered values of Km and Vmax respectively? It simply means to attain the half of the maximal reaction velocity a considerable high substrate concentration is required. And one more point to note here is that if the substrate concentration is increased much, much higher, it can actually displace the inhibitor. 
land at the same maximal velocity. Are you getting that? Well, let me simplify it. I just mean to say that first thing you got it right, that rate constant that is Km is increasing and Vmax is unchanged. That is the first thing you get to know. And what do we infer out of this values of Km and Vmax is that to attain the half of the maximal reaction velocity, we need a considerable value of the substrate concentration. And the most important thing is the substrate concentration is increased at a quite high value, it actually overcomes, it overcounters and displaces the inhibitor. And the Vmax is still unchanged. Yes, its value is not altered at all. I hope you got this because I repeated the whole mechanism twice in a little simplified way. Now let's get to know a few drugs and a few examples of the competitive inhibition. The first of example in this particular regard is the enzyme is the cholinesterase. The endogenous substrate is acetylcholine and the competitive inhibitor is physostigmine or neostigmine. Okay, that's a really good famous example. We know all about the three cholinesterase, acetylcholine, physostigmine and neostigmine. Second example I want to give about the enzyme dopa decarboxylase. In this particular case, the endogenous substrate is levodopa. And the competitive enzyme inhibitor is carbidopa or benzerazide. That's these are drugs that are involved in the treatment of the disease Parkinsonism. So that's how you can connect to them. Let's come over to our third example for this particular thing. We have angiotensin converting enzyme, and that is abbreviated famously as capital A C E. For this one, the endogenous substrate is angiotensin 1, while the competitive inhibitor is captopril, etc. Now, this what we talked about till now was the equilibrium type of competitive inhibition. Now, that's a new thing because an equilibrium is maintained here. But then, what's the next curiosity that is creeping in your minds? You really want to know. If this is the equilibrium type of competitive inhibition, what's the non-equilibrium type of competitive inhibition? Well, in case of non-equilibrium competitive inhibition, there are strong covalent bonds that are formed and the normal substrate, it cannot displace the inhibitor. Got it? Well, that was quite easy. In case of equilibrium type of competitive inhibition, if you increase the concentration of the substrate, it actually surmounts the inhibitor. While in case of non-equilibrium type, no matter how much concentration you increase for the substrate, it will never, never, never displace the inhibitor because the bonds are very, very strong. Covalent bonds, they are the strong bonds. Got it? Now, let's embellish this thing that is non-equilibrium type of competitive inhibition with the examples. Well, first one to comment upon is methotrexate. It has a wonderful affinity for dihydrofolate reductase enzyme better than the dihydrofolic acid. Okay. Second one, let's get to know one more another example. Organophosphates, they react with the cholinesterase. Well, in case of non-equilibrium type of enzyme inhibition, what are the status of Km and the Vmax? That is of much importance and that is for your good information and knowledge. I want to tell you that in this case, the Km it increases while the Vmax it decreases. Yes, its value is altered. The value of the Km and the Vmax both are altered. So that is one great difference from the equilibrium type of enzymatic inhibition to mark my last words of the day i have a string of sentences about the non-competitive enzyme inhibition 
it's quite very different as compared to the equilibrium and the non-equilibrium type of competitive enzyme inhibition in this particular type that is the non-competitive enzyme inhibition the drugs they do not bind to the catalytic side of the enzyme at all yes their binding site is different the drugs are rather binding to the adjacent or some nearby sites and then what occurs the enzyme conformation can be changed that is one possibility and surely the enzyme loses its catalytic property the km is unchanged the vmax decreases got it these were so significant differences from what we have studied till now the first point i'll just repeat in a simplified way the drug is binding to not to the catalytic site but to some adjacent site some nearby site what is the consequence the enzyme is losing the catalytic property and the km is unchanged and the vmax decreases well good to go ex examples for this particular type of non competitive enzyme inhibition are we have acetazolamide for carbonic anhydrase enzyme then we have omeprazole for hydrogen potassium adpase then we have digoxin for sodium potassium adpase we have aspirin for cyclooxygenase and we have sildenafil for phosphodiesterase 5 enzyme well these were some remarkable commentable examples and with these good to go examples it's a good to go time to wrap up for the best day of the week yes it's well i know it's sunday it's a very good fun day but the greatest and the essence of the day is that this time it is holding the glory of the teacher's day well salute to all the great preachers to all the great teachers they are adored they are admired always and they'll stay in our hearts because they have really contributed to make a wonderful life of ours for all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast do visit www.isfarmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine it actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences, drug information updates, and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook, and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name as Pharmacology Difficult. If you are listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned to rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcast. Stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened. Thank you.